How about this question? After all the talk. Okay. After all the talks and the seminars and all that kind of stuff going around, when it's all over, what questions surface for you? So this is not a reading, right? This is a question game for the evening. Right. <laughs> Go ahead. I mean, well, but that would just bring us into a, into a text. Oh, the, the, the findings. I mean, I just, I'm, I am absolutely fascinated by the idea that this guy has captured every way that a person can relate, not only to one another, but to God or, you know, to whatever they believe is true, right? And so now I go around and I see the I see the way certain people function, and I'm trying to pigeonhole them. Now I'm trying to say, oh, they're acting just like the fourth hypothesis or the fifth hypothesis, you know. Um, and how is that? Oh, well, it's kind of fun, but it's not. I don't feel very skilled at it. Um, mm. Not very skilled at it at this point, but I can see that. Somebody like yourself is probably your dialogue shows that you've taken a little time at that yourself. So what question do you service? think that it's exhaustive? Do you think that all the ways people relate and the way man, the way the cosmos relates, it, you think he has them all in the Parmenides? Mm -hmm. So then our scientist who can see such beauty and yet fails to see any any symmetry or in, uh, any understanding of the, mm -hmm. of the fundamental reason why anything is the way it is. That guy has to be in there. In yeah, the it is. Um, yeah. And I find it, I just can't wrap my head around it, I guess. Um, the, but it is a fact, and you know that, even is. though you have difficulty wrapping your head around it. Yeah, the thing that, I, the thing that has, has me going, as I was saying to Russ, I think the thing that bugs me about it the most is that I see it, and that's, that's mm -hmm. so odd. I mean, it's such an odd juxtaposition, considering I don't think of myself as being that bright. I mean, you know, I just, uh, I, I was pretty well convinced through my family teaching that, I, that I'm not smart enough for it, that I would be too stupid. In spite of the too fact stupid. that you're seeing better than the people, blah, 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 well, blah. Yes, and like, yes, and to sit down with a scientist or someone who is, you mm -hmm. know, professional, like I have at times mm -hmm. over the years, and found out it within five minutes or ten minutes that I see better than they do, or, you know, mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're not even capable of, of holding a question, much less seeing anything. Mm -hmm. it's Where does the doubt come in? So far... Yeah, well, the doubt comes... So far you're it talking just about... It just doesn't fit. It's, it's not... It's, oh. it's so unorthodox. And un mm. That I usually, I usually do something stupid to blow it all up and make myself look foolish, and so then, then everybody can walk away just thinking that I've got my head in the clouds and that, I, you know, everything I think is really stupid. Mm. So it becomes a sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy to, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. fit the family, to fit the family thing. So, um, yeah, I don't know what it would, I, I think it would be quite a challenge if I could challenge myself to stay calm, centered, direct, you know, maybe not, not getting too emotional. So yeah, it would be a challenge to break through that model. See, see if I could actually see and then communicate my seeing without, without self-destructing before I finish.
same thing. It's a variation of the same thing. Yeah, I was noticing that. Right. <laughs> and you're saying that this this part is likely to come from family background. Right. And it does seem that I have to go through a certain certain level of insanity, I'll say, or you know, mm -hmm. a certain, certain level mm -hmm. of some kind of <clears throat> strangeness has to happen. That's mm -hmm. familiar, you know, and it, yeah, it puts me back in touch with yeah. something that's easy. For yeah, me. I try. So to, to cut that off and just stay centered, quiet. If you can cut that out. <laughs> what a freedom, right? Yes. Right? This is the problem. Right. But what's interesting, it comes from seeing. From seeing myself seeing. Yeah, from my seeing myself seeing. And, and the prospect of actually being able to communicate that to someone. Mm. See, the... the um, the doubt comes in immediately when the person that I'm talking to has a strange look on their face and they don't, they don't appear to understand what I've said. Or, you know. And I immediately interpret that that I'm not clear and that I've just said something really stupid. Or, then there comes well, now. I think they're stupid. I mean, it has to be one uh, or the other. No, okay. Then, <laughs> then the same then the same kind of doubting comes over. Yeah. Communicating. Right, right, huh? right. What do you say about it? Same question. Uh, well, I was just thinking the vision of the, well, the whole Parmenides, really. I was thinking about the second and the first hypothesis in particular. Mm. It's so profound. It's so deep and so meaningful that it has to bring up attacks like this. And that's not really a question, but... Yes, that's right. <laughs> Matter of fact, if you get into it, it's going to bring up them all. Because behind all problems is a war against seeing. And that's what you and I were talking about, right? And you said, that's right, even Barbara agrees with that. Mm -hmm. Remember? No. <laughs> <laughs> true, though. True. Is that right, Barbara? Oh, yeah. See? Yes, sir. What? That this work, since it is a study in seeing on multiple levels, is going to bring up all your blocks against seeing, under the struggles for seeing, and therefore it's a rather curious work for seeing. Yeah, except uh, Brad. Yeah, <laughs> he's always a no. <laughs> no. I just find it interesting, right? That that's how, that's its design. It seems like. Um, how can I put that? Uh, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, what? You said it. What was I saying? Well, you said it's the design, it's if it was built in the bar amenities to bring Socrates or anyone that was going through it to have their blocks and their problems emerge, and then for Parmenides to have the clarity of his scene to take Socrates through what he needs to free himself from. Mm. However, it's curious difference between what Parmenides does and what a philosophical midwife does. Do you want to give it a shot? Give it a shot. How about answering that? Sure. Um, the same sort of, well, ditto to Julie um, and, um Yeah, it, uh, it challenges seeing, and my problem is most 
intimately associated with my insight, yeah. I think, more than anything. Yet, it seems like somehow mankind has failed if the one thing that is most human is least acceptable yeah. for most of Ooh, humankind. And that's now, that, that, that kind of hurts. Oh. That's right. That's so right. the vision of the Parmenides is what's most human? Is that what you mean? Yes, and seeing. <clears throat> the, the, the revolt, oh. revolt against seeing it seems to permeate. I don't know. Oh. I don't know what that guy standing next to me is thinking. But I don't think he's thinking about the celebration of mind. Oh. Mm, good to find out. I find it interesting that when, when I'm seeing with a divine mind, it implies that I am divine. Mm -hmm. And that's hard on, on the family and people around me because they... they <laughs> you better keep it quiet. Yeah, they don't see what I see. How is that hard on the family? I don't get that. Because how they, is that hard on the family? They they take it personally. They 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 think I'm I'm blasphemy. It's blasphemy. It is. You have a, you've got a, I'm at that level. What do you mean we're all created in God's image? What's up with what's the problem with that? I don't know. Well, that's my ask question. Get back to us on that. But I don't know what they're thinking, but I know that when I say, "Oh look, it's beautiful," and I think it's divine, but it, I think it takes. A divine mind to see another uh, everything in, in outside of the mind as divine as well, and uh, and it, and with that with that in mind, if the good, the notion of the idea of the good, I mean, the idea of the good is there, the idea of beauty is there, and uh, and the, the idea of justice is also there because there are all those. All those notions or those ideas, mm -hmm. uh, platonic ideas, are, are divine at, mm -hmm. at the, the highest level of, of being. Sure. Right. So it's. But you can go beyond me. So I I um, I keep my mouth shut. Mm -hmm. Oh. But not she said I keep my mouth shut. I guess at home. And you have the wonder. Why don't people take the idea that everything is in the image of God? Or a man has been created in the image of God? And you're wondering why there should be such a reaction. Is that the point you were making? Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like the point I'm making, but she still hasn't made it clear what the impact on the family is that's so hard. <laughs> Though it sounds like you're seeing something definite. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. What, what? And, and it's not only my, my seeing, it's also, also my actions. Mm -hmm. They go along with my seeing. And uh, my actions are all good and, mm -hmm. and beautiful and, mm -hmm. and just. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so. So. So, I'm just curious what's like you keep your mouth shut rather than let them have the hardship. But I'm I'm just like you that. haven't said what what the hardship. Is Julia, Julia, is she saying she shuts up, or yeah. rather she exhibits what she sees? Well, she's saying both now. Yeah. Yeah, she's saying both. That her behavior exemplifies it, but she won't talk about it. No, I, I just let them have their opinion, and uh, and uh, sometimes I, I stand up for myself, and, and I say, well, you just don't see what I see. Well, but what's their opinion? Well, that uh, it's blasphemous to, th to talk that way, in a divine way. It's blasphemous. You say that the only saints and or uh, <laughs> only saints are divine. Oh. 
and I haven't died yet and come back. <laughs> So they're like Catholics or something? Yes. <laughs> oh, that's what they are. <laughs> yes, yes, very. So what, what, what questions do you want to raise from this viewpoint? Come on, go further. John. I, I, for me, when I, when I see clearly about something, I have an emotional attack on myself. I beat myself up emotionally. <laughs> same thing, same thing. Is that the same thing with them? Yeah. And, and then I start to do that, and I literally have to tell myself to shut up. <laughs> you know, like... That's where the judge. Shut up. To, well, to tell my mind to shut up yeah. and stop beating myself up. So it's kind of like an internal fight. Yeah. But, uh... And I think, where is that coming from? Where is that voice coming from? Because of Ooh. our group talk here. Ooh. And I see a lot of the image of my family that say that. Where is that voice coming from? Right? Of course, you, the answer to that may not be usable. So I won't give it. But you can change this. That's the question you want to turn that in into. Why is that voice coming when it's coming? Mm. Yeah. Right. Like, even a random thought, whatever you're doing, driving along, Right? Even a random thought, it's not random. Right? It's not random. How would you say, how would you say that? Try something, right? To whatever degree, to whatever degree, whatever you're looking at, to the degree that your, your attention is arrested, is captured, is focused, is fixed on something, to whatever degree that's going on, you're going to get associations with that thing from your past. Look, whatever is going on, Whatever in that captures your attention for even a microsecond, that will open up a link with that thing in your life. They call that somehow association, but that's not a good word for it. It's a linkage. So, why is that voice coming when it does? <clears throat> Take a look. See what triggered it. So even a random thought is not random. If you want to turn off <clears throat> the voice is going on in your mind, don't give it attention. Let it go. See what happens. 
That's all. Just see what happens. Hmm. Danger. Yeah, you might be dangerous. What? I said it'll be dangerous. Why? Um, <laughs> why is it dangerous? What's dangerous about it? You uh, might fall asleep. Come on, it's dangerous. Uh, well, well, you asked what the question, what pattern surface for for you after the talks and stuff. And I notice that I go into what I call a protective mode. People wouldn't see it as protective, but it is protective. Psych, it's weird. The stuff I do isn't protective, but so, it's, hey, it has a sense it, of because now you danger. can link the word protection with the word doubt and danger and danger. <clears throat> because, so I do certain activities because there is really no doubt. Well, that's right, because I doubt the whole seminar, and I better watch out. <laughs> there, because? Well, Come on. Um, well, I think that because... Uh, Something's going to happen. Well, I doubt <clears throat> that it's real, and I doubt that I deserve it, and I doubt... Oh, Bob, there it is. A new word is linked with it. Right. What is it? That I, that I enjoyed myself and liked it. I deserve it. Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the key word. I don't deserve it. No. Can't, can't be. You've got to that's be careful. A, that's linked in the same. Li hey, that's linked with doubt. Yeah. Right. Protection. They're all. They ring. See. It's weird. See. Yeah. They're linked. Yeah. And each step of these steps has its own logos. <laughs> a repetition of the same thing, repeating itself again and again. Yeah. Therefore, what you want to do is just see what starts it. You're lingering about the seminar. That's enough. Now you're going to get associations or linkages with that. And it's going to fit within your own background, whatever it is. Whatever <clears throat> it is. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, there's a real disbelief about it. See, Doubt. it's not a real disbelief about it because it is not systematically explored as a disbelief. True. It's believed to be. A disbelief. Right. It's all under the cloud. It is a cloud. Yeah. It functions like right. a cloud. It functions as a cloud. Like a big cloud walks over me. And I'm right. Saying, okay. And it has its black. own, it has its own certainty. Con yes. No. It's yeah, all of that. Yeah, it's heavy. And the only way it comes in full bloom, if you have an occasion for seeing. It's interesting because after the seminar, I just assumed everything I was doing was just normal and there wasn't any problem. And I'm going, wait a minute, now you're raising it, and I'm going, oh God. <laughs> Whichever God I was following. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, amazing. Yeah. Like, by the way, uh, is it by chance are you seeing now? Yeah, and yeah. I'm also being upset because <laughs> of what I did. <laughs> Let's see, it's Friday. Oh, you no, know, it takes me five days to wake up. Uh -oh. <laughs> no. This way it goes. Another one. I, I think it's remarkable that that 
um, this kind of dialogue that we're having about what happens when we get the Parmenides or are seeing that kind of language is absent from the Parmenides. That's right. Right, like Parmenides never tells Socrates, you've got a problem. No, 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 yes he does. Does he? Like in the way that we're, in the way that we're talking about? No, no, but he says, hey, you know what, you're young, that's the problem. Right. Right, so he does point out something, doesn't he? Yeah, it's, but, it's, but not yeah. back into the family. Right. Right. And he tells him he needs to get some exercise. Right? Ooh. He not, not look at a problem, but, but exercise himself. See, this is an exercise. Yeah. One, not in the part of it. Yeah, but it's an exercise. <laughs> Want to see something? Try it. Yeah. Jump in. Earlier you said all, if I got it right, uh, behind all problems is a war against seed. Right. All problems? Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. So if that's the case, what would the world be like without a war on scene? Does it does it fun does it does it play a function? Does does it have anything to do with providence, I guess is what I'm asking. Well I'm, that's not clear about your question because are you asking what what kind of world or world would there be without problems? <clears throat> that's easy, but I don't think that's what you're asking. Well, right, so, we're here because, uh, because when this place was designed, Harry Dravidovich McGee was present. <laughs> See, I start quoting people and I get nothing but laughter. And they created this place, and when they finished, they agreed this was the most perfect place for people to have problems. It's designed to have problems. In their wisdom. Because that's the only way you can get growth. Way that if, if problems are the only way you can get growth, yep. and all problems owe to a war against seeing, then the war against seeing is the only way we could get growth. Right, oh. <laughs> Fighting the war against seeing. Yeah, the, war against winning, that, the war against that which blocks seeing. Oh, the block is the war against seeing. Yeah. But to get seen, you gotta understand why. Hmm. <clears throat> of which there are many people ready to jump upon you once you display a certain kind of seeing in their midst. Is that likely? Oh yeah. yeah. Except for women, right, Barbara? Oh, even with women. <laughs> I, as an example, can adjust to that. I think there's something interesting about this seminar, too. I wanted to know, especially the ones that go every morning to the seminars, because it just occurred to me that there are a group of, group of us that go every morning, go several times a week, study this dialogue, read your dialogue, and came prepared for this seminar. So in that sense, we reached a certain height that I don't know how many of us have ever reached. I know that I've never reached that height before. And it makes sense why what I did afterwards, I had to just brutally dismiss it. It right. just occurred to me of that there's, there's more in this seminar than I would say even other seminars. 
because we have we've been studying, going along, we've had and you also, you're required to participate on a higher level. Yes, and we came prepared to, to participate on a higher level. And, and so, yeah, I can see that, you know, like, I don't know how many others, but I can see that impact would be there, or have to be there. It isn't there. They're lucky. <laughs> Hello. 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 Are you requesting testimony? David. You're, you're one of these early morning. Early morning. I really didn't get the, the force of your question. Well, I don't think it was a question, it was an observation. And I guess I'm asking, what impact did anybody else notice or compare, or or the or what happened after the patterns that surfaced afterwards? Was there a greater intensity than they'd experienced before? And the reason I say that is because I didn't realize until just now that that the intensity by which I went right to my problem. It was like I didn't go past go. I just got there. <laughs> and I went, whoa. So, and I, and I was comparing the reason tonight mm -hmm. when you asked that. Mm -hmm. And I was seeing that I prepared for this. I'd been involved in this discussion. I was read your dialogue. So I had raised my own level of, of seeing in a, in a different mm -hmm. way mm -hmm. to match the content of the of the seminar at a different level. And, and in, I counterattack that. Yeah, and you're interested in knowing what has happened to other people. Right. Does it, do others have and others you, notice you that? You could even say not only that, but the past seminar as well as the morning seminars, you could ask the same question. That too. That too. Right. Yeah. I just didn't realize the significance of, well, for myself, I didn't realize it until just now. So you're saying you didn't realize the impact of being prepared? To the degree I was, that I raised my level of preparation mm -hmm. much greater than I have ever mm -hmm. done in the past. And so the impact was great. The counterattack was counter dramatic. What do you want to do with that? Does this raise a question for you? Or? Well, it may have come from why I don't prepare. <laughs> Very well. Mostly. Because I'm mad at Yeah. I mean, you've told me stories. Does it matter that you guys have never, I mean, have you ever studied the Parmenides like this before? No. Right, like three or four days in the morning? No. Leading for a year and a half up into the seminar. No. So. That, that's the question is not clear. Uh, so what question do you answer? I think it's different. Doesn't it make sense then that you wouldn't have had this before? Regina, since you've never done this kind of. By the way. Career, would you agree that you have put quite a bit of time in the past mm -hmm. on the Parmenides? Matter of fact, are you one of the people who memorized certain entire propositions? Yeah. Right. And the first part. Too. Right. So she, in that sense, she has been into it. Yeah, so. but you guys studying it together. But something. You being there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's actually not studying together. Although it is, it's actually him. Okay. <laughs> or he, as the case may be, more grammatically. And he's not too bad at it. He's not too bad. <laughs> and I've been in the Republic before, where we have spent five years doing the Republic. This is completely different psychically for me. Hmm. Oh, you can make me jealous. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Crow. Crow. Crow, right? Make him jolly. Not the train of God. What did it say, Dave? What did it say? It say right there. Well, participating in it at the level we all were, um, in which. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the Speak for myself. <laughs> you don't want to know where I was at. <laughs> 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 okay. um, oh. Maybe in the same mm. place I would. Uh, and being able to rise to that level in, in the experience and shutting it down, mm. what happened to some of us. Um, you said that this is a great place to be. The universe, is, as it stands now, is a perfect place where there, it was created to have problems. That's right. But with the idea that we're participating in exercises in Lucia mm -hmm. and that there's a principle that it is a benevolent universe, <clears throat> I don't see how those two, how a benevolent universe contributes to the virtue of having a problem. Because every problem and principle is capable of being solved, and that is a function of providence. Every problem is capable of being solved. That's right. That's why they call it a problem. The, the fact that a prob it's an invitation, a problem is an invitation to encounter providence? Uh, let me go back. Hey. What is a problem? A problem means that you recognize that in principle it's capable of being solved. That's why it's called a problem. So that insight that it's solvable is providential? Is that and as well as the fact that that is true is providential. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh, both. Okay. Okay. We are in a universe in which in principle all, all problems are in principle soluble. That is true. That must mean Providence is, That's providence is, is part and parcel of our universe. A whole inch of mm -hmm. But you know, I can see why certain traditions want to say we're fucked mm. um, because we're human. <laughs> <laughs> because we're human, and that we do have that human quality that allows us to have problems. How does that? I just don't see how that would be a function of problem. To, to wish that, that ability to forget, to have that ability to forget. And, and it's, not, it's not a particular question, it's more theoretical, because I forget like hell, no. but um, on all eight cylinders. But um, it just, it's just curious. I know Providence is the <coughs> recognition that uh, a block can be overcome. Mm -hmm. I'm uncomfortable with that. But to have woven the idea of a problem into a benevolent, providential, usiistic. Well, that wasn't difficult. I know you were there three weeks before the creation in Brooklyn. <laughs> 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 No, I don't know if my puzzle is clear, but if anybody wants to help. It's on, John, it's on, do, do we are allowed to, well, how did you put it again? Allowed to? Forget. Forget. Oh, that's right. The ability, I forgot. The ability to forget is unjust. God screwed us with that. That's, that's what a lot of people want to say. But, and, no. You they don't want, want to say God screwed us. They, they don't take it to the level of mine. Mm -hmm. But, um... And, I, and I'm wondering why even in that, in that church. Well, uh, you know, in principle, there never has been a more absurd idea that someone has not in history turned into a religion. Yeah, I get that. Well, couldn't we put it like this? Wouldn't have God created a more perfect universe if he didn't allow us to forget? But we don't forget. We don't? How so? Because the one thing you can't forget are your problems. 
<laughs> you can't go home and say, oh shit, I forgot my problem. Yeah, right. No, it welcomes you all the time. Right? You see through your problem because your problem is nothing other than the present state of your seeing. That's all. You don't have a problem. The problem has you. <laughs> Yeah. No way, man. It's got you by the you know what. Right, yeah. short hairs. <laughs> so, whether you're male or female, got you by something. Oh, that is interesting. Do you think we should ask Brian? Of course. Yes. Yeah. What? What yeah. should we ask him? Same oh. question. The same question. <laughs> Didn't he already answer? Question. Hmm. Which question? I go along with what we're just saying. Uh, what do you go along with? Questions. Hmm. The amazing thing is it surfaced a lot of what we've been discussing. Uh, just being present to each and every instant in terms of what's blocking my seeing, what mm -hmm. images I'm functioning to, mm -hmm. when I'm, what voice actually could be attributed to a voice that's actually true, or are all daydreams a source of false drama? Mm -hmm. and you, you, you have the potential to give life to mm -hmm. it or not. All random thoughts, mm -hmm. daydreams, Dreams, life goals, they're all the same. Mm -hmm. That's why we know we're living in an intelligible universe, because we have problems. Look, do you find it curious that if you have a self, that's the thing that's getting, that always gets upset, <laughs> that you have a problem? I mean, why are people upset because they have a problem? They should say, Oh shit, it's just a problem. You know? I mean, that's the nature of reality. Uh, why, are, why are people upset? You got somebody in the office. Because it's a block. Uh, right? Agree? Because it sucks. Because we're better than that. Because it sucks. Because it sucks. But what is it? Suffering sucks. Yes, but what is it that, that recognizes that suffering sucks? That which wants to go further. And how? Well, there must be something about the self that doesn't like being called names. Right. <laughs> and every problem ends up, you call yourself a name. Right. <laughs> the final judgment of every problem is, I'm a... <laughs> right? Fear. <laughs> You said daydreams, random thoughts, all that, and you put in, which I never heard you say before, life goals in that category of things. And I was, I'm rather curious about yes. that. I've never heard you say that before. Yes. Life goals? Yeah, that's because this assumes you know what the word goal means. Going after money is not a goal. Well, a trivial goal, but okay. No, no, that's not a goal. That's being busy. <laughs> Certainly keeps you busy. That's all. It's not a goal. So, if we're talking, if we're talking philosophically, a goal has to be meaningful for it to be an end, a telos, right? It has to be an end. And for it to be an end, it means there must be something about it that brings about a benefit. But there's no benefit in accumulating wealth or power. There's no benefit. Matter of fact, it's a waste of time. So when you say life goals, that's a, not referring to meaningful goals, but... It, it, pres you know, it presupposes meaningful goals, or it's not a goal. It's, being, it's keeping, like, uh, you know this distinction some people make between 
You must, of course, have a vocation and later in life develop an avocation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what that means? Nope. It means they recognize, the, the, they recognize what they're doing isn't worth anything and they have to build a, a lab in the garage to, make, to try to make believe there's something meaningful in their lives. By the way, he doesn't know what meaning is. Yes, yeah, so that's yeah. exactly where it leads. He doesn't know what what's, meaning what's is. What's meaning? What is meaning? Meaning means one is, through that activity, by using the mind, they can benefit. That's meaning. Otherwise, it's not meaning. How do you get it? Through using the mind, they can benefit. Yeah. yeah. So there, it's starting but, to be... Pardon me, like I know someone who quite recently in a talk and they said that um, they have in Canada a great number of classic cars. They don't drive them, they collect them. They don't... It's me, it's stupid. <laughs> That's so much for Jay's car. It's stupid. It's true. They don't drive it, they collect it. Well, they polish garbage cans and gold plate them and they think they got something. <laughs> I mean, yeah. like a friend of mine was trying to market fur line piss pots. Fur line piss pots. Yeah, it's a whole new industry. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's, it's irrelevant, that's all. Oh, yeah. Not that a person can feel dedicated and busy and can be patted on the head for doing work. See, the Greeks, the Greeks are the only people that I, I know of, and because I don't know many others, uh, who have the myth of Prometheus. Prometheus bequeathed to man Right? All of the arts to free him from meaninglessness. It's remarkable. And also gave them how to domesticate animals to free him from work. We've given up on that. We're in a culture that literally, by the way, there's a city in Holland now that has announced that they are now going to give an annual guaranteed wage to every person in their city. Mm -hmm. You know what that did away with? Social welfare departments supervising poor to make sure they don't cheat and all that kind of crap, right? The whole structure, that enormous structure that is in place for all of these so-called social services is out the window. Everyone is guaranteed a minimum wage an annual minimum wage. That's the life of man. If war, hey, if work was important, you wouldn't get a job. The rich would have it all. <laughs> yes. Right? They wouldn't let you work. They'd color it all. It's, not, it's, it's, it's absurd. We have the technology to support our lives with absolutely minimum effort now. Why are we, why do our people now have to have two and three jobs in order to make a, a decent living for their families? Except the whole structure is absurd. Yeah. That's all. Mm -hmm. And it's doable. I mean, it's doable. So the whole political financial structure is all absurd. Yeah, but it's still nicer to live here than other places. What? It's still nicer to live here than other places. 
I mean, well, as far as getting a job. that's because other places are are run by people who have less interest in you than they have other than in themselves. Yeah. I, I don't know that it's nice. I mean, how many how many governments exist for the like for the a profit motive of their rulers. I mean, they rip off people. This is what government is, rip, ripping off people, taking away their income, right? To eliminate all the kinds of things that make a life better, yeah. That's, that's my, my social thesis. <laughs> Hasn't changed much. And <laughs> a problem is, uh, well, I'm misunderstanding. Oh. Good. Is a problem of misunderstanding, an incorrect understanding, and so the ability to recognize uh, incorrect understanding is the imposition of providence yeah. and the nature of the soul. Mm -hmm. And so it seems like the only thing that's lacking is something to link those two together, that's the right. misunderstanding and the soul. Yeah which means that the only true art a person needs is philosophy. The logos the of philosophy, yeah. Yeah, that's all it means. But would you go for the formulation of incorrect understanding? I like misunderstanding better, like as in you misunderstanding. Well, then, call un wait a minute. Understanding then, incorrect. Yeah, I'll use that. <laughs> yeah, very well said. Yeah. Yeah, misunderstanding. Hmm. There is no problem that does not exhibit misunderstanding. No, but, but yeah, I don't know. Yes. That language in, implies incorrect understanding, but a problem is no understanding at all, right? It's an imposition. Well, of course yes. not. There isn't any understanding on a problem. Oh, it, does, it has an understanding? I mean, if, you, if, if it's a false belief, call it a false belief. Don't call it understanding. But can't you understand a false belief? Well, see, no. every problem, every problem follows rigorously from its premises. Well, that's the problem with it. Its premises are always false. Not that people can't go through what is called understanding because they're not standing on anything. Not understanding on something true, so. Well, I'm sorry, what, what's, what's the point you just made? I, I didn't get that. I'd like to though, I think especially if it's good. <laughs> Every problem, any problem we look at, you will agree as you look at a person unfolding their problem, that the premise upon which they proceed, they learned under circumstances that were coercive. Ah, worse than that, someone else created it so that it appeared to you to be true. Every problem is a false perception of what is true. There's also a false perception of someone looking good. Right? No problem comes into existence without the parent or the surrogate looking sincere, looking like they care, looking sincere above all things, and it's a mask. It's, it's not true. So from that, they then want to imitate those people that look so great in their past, and so behavior is imitative following from the premises and the conditions under which it was learned. Nothing new. So fundamentally, we are all philosophers. We all love learning, and we take to learning wholeheartedly. It's just that there are some, there's a whole culture here and there of misconceptions about what it is to learn. Yes. But all of people course. are fundamentally in love with wisdom. Yeah. yeah, there are whole systems that try to get people involved in getting as much as they can, as quickly as they can, the easiest way they can. It's called law. Called what? Law. Law? Or finance. Oh. 
It's a waste of life. It's a waste of a life. In my family, I've got people who are heavily involved in money. They're just wasting their life. A stupid way to live. Right? <laughs> is that wrong? Is that wrong? The grass and all. It's interesting. The whole the public school system totally supports. I mean, their whole idea of educating a child is to prepare them to compete in that world of finance. Right. Well, that's what's wrong with education. <clears throat> I mean. How, and how many cultures, how many cultures produce people who are educated without having a public school or even a private school? I mean, for a thousand years, it was the apprentice model. If you want to become a doctor, find a doctor you can work with, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, uh, schools exist to socialize people. Matter of fact, that was put forward quite, quite uh, prominently. Uh, the idea of a high school came into existence only for one reason. Right? They wanted to keep in school children to socialize them. Why? The Germans that were coming in here, you know what they were? Germans. You know what did with the, the Irish? You know what they brought with them? Being Irish. Yeah. You know what the Italians brought with them? being Italian. They designed the high school so that no kid would ever think a damn thing about their nationality because it didn't make a goddamn bit of difference in their education. That's a goal. That was an achievement. Is that a good thing? That's a good thing, right? That was the goal. To transcend yeah. cultural... Yes. To d uh, dumbify it all. That's right. But to dumbify it is how they resolve. It. Yeah. Now they differ. Rather than. That's the way it was. It was designed for that purpose. Yeah. I don't get it. They created high schools so that they wouldn't think about their nationality because it doesn't make a damn bit of difference. That's right. I don't get that. Well. I mean, how could they? I mean, hey, look here. Like We're a nation. Of, right? We're a nation. New nation. All of these segments are coming in, are loyal to their own group. Oh, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. You can't survive. They'll be at war with one another. Yeah, yeah. Just like because they'll bring, that they'll bring their conflicts and their national hatreds into this country. Mm -hmm. People in our country came up with the idea of the high school. Oh. High school is a waste of time. Yeah. Sure. Everybody knows that. <laughs> right? Whatever you do in high school, you should have done in grade school. Yeah. Right? You want to go to college? Okay, then prepare for that. But and a bachelor's is now the new high school education. We've been watered down even more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, right there. the friend school in New York, right, who I happen to know very well, you could get out of that school, grade school, with two years of Greek, a year of French, math up to trig, introduction to calculus. And a lot of people do that yeah. by the time they're 15. Yeah. And then what do they do in high school? They made it accessible to, knowledge accessible to everyone by making it less challenging. Yeah. I went to school with kids that had that kind of a background. They went into college. They swam. They didn't have to do any work. They already did it. Uh -huh. Well, the institution was already in place, but it yeah. was a Latin school. And after third grade, if you couldn't pass your Latin exams in the 1850s, you didn't go into the next level. That's right. It was for a group of people who were capable of entertaining a certain kind of learning, and it wasn't for the masses. That's right. I think England. That's right. It England wasn't. Say that at the age of 16, yeah. they picked two routes: college, 
Well, education. junior colleges came into existence as a salvage function. Mm -hmm. Literally, they came into, especially in California, they came in as a salvage function to capture all the people who didn't learn a damn thing in high school. That's what it's for. That's what it was for, to recover. The shame of going to a German college. Yeah. Yeah. And now they're teaching Chinese and Arabic instead of Latin and Greek. They don't even offer Latin and Greek anymore. A few places do, but yeah, Peter Rice too. So I guess it's for the business world. But now the, the junior colleges are becoming uh, board and cares for the many of the mentally ill. Oh, well, what do you look her? Oh, see, education only only begins when you take it seriously yourself. Everybody knows that. But in our culture, there are many schools, if you take your education seriously, you're an outcast. Yes. I mean, well, that's anti-intellectual systems. So let's stop it. <laughs> All right. Well, and let people get into those kinds of courses when they're mature enough to take them and want to take it. Curious? Very much so. That's why that book was called A New Paradigm for Human Understanding. The New Paradigm. Yeah. Be. Yeah. Oh, this whole thing's been a marketing ploy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Ironically, not for money. Yeah. I'm into it, where is it? I had a talk with a gentleman once, uh, last week, and he reported that he heard from a, what appeared to be a reliable source that a Tibetan yoga was talking about the fact that for him, that he knew his colleagues were able to communicate with one another telepathy, telepathically. It's a well-kept secret. Hey, assuming that's true, shouldn't one of the universities have gone over to that gentleman and said, here, we'll give you an office, set up what you need, let's do it. And we don't have to buy internet. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I'm sorry to make a joke out right. of it. It's true. Yeah. Like, Anybody with any insight at all would have said, That's right. let's explore this. Yeah. This is meaningful. Yeah. Wouldn't have to have hearings with Hillary. And, and instead? He was rejected. Oh. And some of the people, some of the people who knew him, mm said, You're de you, are d you are discussing our secrets, you should shut up. Oh, oh. Uh -huh. that's, that's a military crazy. secret. That's what it is, right? No, no, see? Mm -hmm. That's the old idea of a trade, right? You don't teach someone just at random. They have to go through some initiation before they become an electrician. That's still today, isn't it? To really know electricity, what do you have to do? Get shocked a bunch and do a bunch of crap and hang out in attics and crawl spaces. And, and, if, you, and if you spot an electrician who's open to revealing the secrets of that game, what would you do? Oh, they, they'll tell me. They're just not going to tell you. I, I listen and do whatever they tell me to do. Yeah. Or if you get into the self generating electricity like Tesla, then you go to jail or something. Well, that's what we do. Well, he was smart enough to keep out of the, the range of the law. <laughs> Got to change society. Yeah. Oh. Would you repeat that last thing? He was smart enough to what? <coughs> Stay away from the law. To escape detection. Oh. Yeah, he was. He, he knew what was going on. He was very cautious. So how can we um, uh, partly this into a new dialogue? 
that we could read on Friday night. Okay. Which one do you want? Chimaeus. Chimaeus. That one. Wow, that was good. <laughs> that was fast. Time is? Sure. Yeah. work. Magnificent piece of work. I ignored it every time we did it. Good. <laughs> I, I was preparing for metaphysics. No, you forgot. Jaime is. Jaime is, it is. Okay. So which one? I was curious. Would you ever be interested in reading the Gorgias again on a Friday night? Not necessarily next Friday, but... Sure. Yeah. Uh, no, Gorgias is an old favorite of mine. You like it? Okay. Just yeah. curious. Yeah. Yeah. But it should be read with the Pythagoras as well. They, could, they are joined and they go together. Should be read with the protagonist as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. What time is it? Next week, this time. Yeah. Hi, man. Yeah. How's your world?